Hi, Phil Aston here from Mass Spinning Magazine. This is my tribute to Meatloaf. And before I go any further, I want to dedicate this video to his wife, Deborah, and his daughters, Pearl and Amanda. Because behind all of these tribute videos, we have to remember there is somebody who's lost their husband and their father. So this is for you and all of Meatloaf's friends and family. I don't want to kind of go into the stats and stuff because you'll see that elsewhere in other tributes. So what I want to try and do is just talk about Meatloaf and how I discovered uh, him as an artist and what it was like um, back then when Bat Out of Hell was slowly, slowly, quickly starting to take over the whole of the world, what, it's, what it felt like. <clears throat> my, my first encounter with Meatloaf was from this artist, Ted Nugent. Now, Ted Nugent is more known for his politics now, but back then in the 70s in the UK, he was very much a fast rising star and guitar hero. His guitar skills aside, he himself, Ted would say that his voice and vocals were fairly wounded. And that's fairly true. And this particular album came into my collection because in 1976, in the UK, punk was starting to rise up and the, the music paper which focused more on rock music was Sounds. And one particular week, their single of the week was Dog Eat Dog by Ted Nugent. And I thought it was so unusual for Ted Nugent to have a single of the week, I went out and bought it. And I thought it was absolutely fantastic, great riff, um, fantastic song, great guitar solos. But it was the voice. The vocals were incredible. Um, this really was somebody, you know, sounding like they really meant dog e dog, uh, you know, in the, in the world that we were living in then, you know, and there I was as a as a 17 year old teenager. And I thought this is really good. So I went out and bought this record free for all. And um, I just thought it was fantastic that the, the weakest song on it is when actually Ted sings himself. But, you know, there were some absolutely fantastic songs on here. But so when I looked to see who the, the vocalist was, it said Meatloaf. And it's not like, you know, I was expecting you know, Robert Plant, you know, Ian Gillen, Paul Rogers, Sammy Hager, you know, proper name, this is Meatloaf vocals. But those those songs, you know, Writing on the Wall, um, it's such a fantastic song, and, and um, Together, which is a ballad. So I just thought, oh, you know, I wonder if this guy will do something else because he didn't appear on the next Ted Nugent album, he was gone again. So fast forward to 1978, and this appeared, Bat Out of Hell. I remember hearing it first in rock discos, the title track, and you know, the, the people queuing up to go up to the DJ, who is this, what is this? It was this long, epic song with an absolutely turbo-driven guitar solo, but vocals and lyrics were just, fan just absolutely fantastic. And I, I think one of the, the, the things to, to, to point out here is that this album crossed over to different tribes in the UK. I was an apprentice electrician. I remember, you know, being in various factories and offices where I was working. I'd hear people say, have you bought Bat Out of Hell yet? Have you bought Bat Out of Hell? It was an album that everyone seemed to just buy. There's no internet. There's a few music papers. Um, these tracks are really long, they're epics, they're not really getting that much airplay in the UK, but people are buying it, and they're just buying the album. And lyrically, it was very different to anything we had experienced before. The closest we had was Bruce Springsteen. These lyrics about the street, you know, from Jim Steinman, you know, these observational lyrics about growing up, being young, the kind of angst you have and, and what's going on out your window and, you know, the kind of, that kind of growing up, being a, you know, teenage, teenager, etc. But musically, a lot of us back then didn't connect so much with Bruce's music because it wasn't quite rock enough. So when, so the, all that changed with Bat Out of Hell, this was rock enough. This was rock theatre in many ways. This was imagery. This was like a film set to rock music. But unlike, um, say, rock theatre, where it's kind of so removed from reality, this was our reality. Um, 
this was rock theater that where you were in it you could visualize yourself in it you know like a bat out of hell i'll be gone by the morning time the morning comes um even if the reality was i was going to use my bus pass to catch the last bus home and um i hadn't got a motorbike that leapt out of the earth didn't matter I could, still, I could still identify with that line. And then Paradise by the Dashboard Light, all of us wanted that to be a real thing. All of us wanted to think, when I get a car, um, you know, if I go on a date, I want that, my, that's going to be my story. And, you know, and, and Ellen Foley on that track is fantastic as well. But it was, that was, there was nothing else like that. It just stood alone and the production by Todd Rudgeon means that it sounds it sounds fantastic. It sounded epic. The songs were epic. Um, it needed epic production. It needed epic guitars. It needed epic drums. It needed epic arrangements and it has them all. And it needed an epic cover as well. It, it kind of needed to sum everything up and it did. And it made, um, obviously, Meatloaf a household name. And he was still a very mysterious character. You've got to remember that back in 1978, the archetypal rock star was somebody that looked as if he needed a bag of chips. Um, they were quite slender people, rock stars, and um, Jim and Meatloaf were kind of larger than life, literally. Um, but it all went with it. It was literally like sticking the finger up to the man, really. It was saying, this is not like anything else. This does not follow any template that you've seen so far for what should be a hit rock album. It doesn't follow any paths that have been trodden before. It's forming its own path. And I think I did a tribute for Jim Steinman. And to think now that Meatloaf and Jim are back together, um, they were a formidable force in, in rock music and songwriting. And they were made for each other. And I know Meatloaf had tremendous success on his own as an artist, but those two together and this album was like the, the spark that just shot out across the planet, hitting people's imaginations, hitting people's love of music, of where they were, if they'd had a boyfriend or girlfriend yet, or whether they'd come in at the other end of their first relationship or whether they were trying to get a motorbike and, and trying to do something their mum and dads didn't agree what they were doing and they were in a dead-end job you know and um, you know they just wanted to live for the night um this this album had the soundtrack and the lyrics and the diary entries for where we all wanted to be and uh, and finally i'll say that when i used to go to rock discos in in that in that time, um, an air guitar, as I mentioned before, was a quite an essential part of your toolkit, uh, something you'd get past the bouncer because obviously it was an air guitar. You know, but I, I could be I could be in a rock club, I remember one in Birmingham, um, Edwards number eight, and they would they would play Excited by Judas Priest and the the dance floor would be full of like um, you know, kids playing their imagined guitars, and then they play Bad Out of Hell. And it, the same people were playing imagined guitars, but there'd also be like girls dancing and, and other people on the dance floor as well. It just crossed over and and connected with so many people. So today I'm going to play Bat Out of Hell. I'm going to play it from the beginning to the end and I'm going to enjoy the lyrics and I'm going to enjoy the delivery and the, the kind of the humour in Miglev's voice. But he meant every word. And then I'll probably roll back a bit further and listen to Writing on the Wall from the Free For All album by Ted Nugent. But thank you, Meatloaf, for all the music. It will live on. And special um, thoughts to your family. And thank you for watching this video. Thank you for taking the time. Stay safe, take care, and I shall see you on my next video. <music> Thank you.